In this video, I'm going to show you how to do questions 13 through 16 on page 353. Um, number 13 says to write each polynomial function in factored form. List the zeros of the function and their multiplicity. Find any relative max or relative minimum values. Okay, so let's start with uh, factoring it first because in order to find the zeros we must first factor. So I am uh, going to start by looking at this and noticing that there is a common factor of an x and I'm going to divide that out of each term and the remaining uh, trinomial happens to be factorable if you think of factors of 12 that will add up to a 1 you get 3 and 4 to get that negative 1, you want this to be a negative 3 and a positive, or excuse me, a negative 4 and a positive 3. And so I'll continue the factoring process. So this will be x plus 3, x minus 4. And I'm going to change that to 0 because I'm looking for the 0. And you can see that I have three of them, which matches the fact that this is a third degree equation. The zero product property states that if you multiply some numbers together and the answer is zero, then one of the numbers has to be zero. So and if that's the case, then my zeros are going to be zero, which is that value right there, and negative three, and positive four. And that's where the zeros occur. Next, you are asked to uh, find the relative max or min. So what we're going to have to do is go to the graphing calculator and put it into Y1. Adjust your window so that you can get a full picture of this. And you can see from my values the ones that I chose. This was just done simply by playing around with it and making sure I had a good view of the window. Next, you can see the graph. It's uh, the full uh, zeros are showing. You can see we have one at negative 3, 0, and positive 4 as noted. We want to find these two values right here. This is, happens to be the relative max and this happens to be the relative min. So to find those two values you want to go to second calc. And If you look at your menu you can see minimum and maximum. Let's go ahead and find the minimum value first. Okay, you'll notice the blinking cursor, or the spider as we call it, shows up on the screen. It's asking for the left bound. And again, this is where you want to section off the graph for the calculator so that it'll understand that this is the value that you want. So pull that blinking cursor just a little bit to the left and push enter. And then you want to get to the right side of that minimum value. So again, hit right and then hit enter and you do not have to guess so just hit enter again and you can see that the minimum is negative 20.75 and uh, that would be the answer to this portion next we want to find this value right here which is the max so again go back to second calc and there's the maximum value hit number four and now pull that blinking cursor back over to the left side of that maximum value which would be right about there and hit enter and then go to the uh, right side of that spider disappeared just a little bit off the screen more than I cared for it to and hit enter and then hit enter again and the maximum value occurs when x is negative 1.69 but the actual maximum is 12.60 so that would be the answer to that portion of your um, of your answer let's go back to question number 14 now in number 14 I'm not going to go through all of the graphing to get the max and the mins because it's done the same way for each one on this one you can see that g of x is the difference between two perfect squares. You will factor that as 2 plus x, 2 minus x, and we again are looking for the zeros of the function, so we'll let that equal 0. And now we'll solve for the values of x that make each of these binomials equal to 0. And we can quickly see that that x is going to equal positive and negative 2. And that would be the answer to question 14. The relative max for number 14 occurs at 4. 
and there is no relative min because as you know this is a parabola and it is a concave down parabola so it will have no minimum value. Next number 15 whoops jumped off the screen hang on you can see it's already factored and uh, we just need to find the zeros now of this function so we will set this equal to zero and we will see that we have um, some zeros at negative two and at zero itself and let's talk about the multiplicity of those the zero product property states if you multiply two numbers together and the answer is zero one of the numbers must be zero so x will equal zero and the multiplicity of that is three and x will equal negative two and the multiplicity of that is yes you guessed it four and our last question we're going to do question number 16 this time they give us the zeros of the function and we're asked to write it as a polynomial function so start with the zeros then you want to write those as factors so take each of these values and put them back into the factored form I put this zero right here up in the front just simply because it's more convenient if negative 3 is a zero then x plus 3 is the factor and negative 2 x plus 2 is the factor and if it's 2 x minus 2 equals fact is the factor and again if you solve for the zeros now you'll get each and every one of these values I've taken the time to go ahead and distribute the first two and get this answer right here and the last two to get these two answers right here so now I'm going to go ahead and multiply these two binomials and I'll be finished so start with x squared times x squared that gives you x to the fourth and x squared minus 4 is minus 4x squared. Now I'm going to distribute the 3x to the x squared and that gives me plus 3x cubed and 3x times negative 4 is minus 12x. You can see this is slightly out of order you may want to rearrange your terms so that they are descending so we have x to the fourth plus 3x cubed minus excuse me plus 4x squared minus 12x and that is the answer to question number 16 and that concludes this video